Back when I first started making videos, one of the first comments I remember getting was someone who asked me whether I ever did any normal stuff. And I'm assuming he meant just normal weightlifting that was not, um, you know, biased in some way, just straight up weightlifting. And it seemed to, to me, I thought that was a weird question simply because I had been doing PRI for so long at that point that to me, everything I talk about is completely normal. And then I realized that most people have never, first of all, never heard of PRI. And second of all, are not aware that the human body is asymmetrically designed, is not aware that the right side of the body and the left side of the body will never be the same and will never move in the exact same way. And that, uh, so in that, because of that, they look at what I'm talking about as, you know, not normal or, or maybe alternative. But in reality, let me pose a question to you. If you knew that you legitimately have more muscle on the right side of your spine, on the right side of your body, than you do on the left, and that that muscle, uh, because you breathe 20,000 times a day, every time you breathe, there is a stronger pull to the right side than to the left side. So humans have an, a an ingrained tendency to favor the right side of the body. If you knew that, that's the starting point of your training program, that you legitimately have more muscle on the right side of your body, that, and I mean, the heart is on more on the left, but the heart isn't really the same type of muscle that we're talking about, whereas the diaphragm is a contracting muscle, uh, and it pulls pretty strongly on the spine. So, if you knew that as the starting point, would you take that into account in, in regards to how you lift? If you were to realize that because of this asymmetry that's naturally inside us, that there will never be anything called a bilateral lift. So a bilateral shoulder press, bilateral bench press, bilateral row, bilateral squat, deadlift, whatever. What if you were to realize that there is no such thing as a bilateral exercise because bilateral would mean two of the same, doing the same thing, right? So ostensibly your hands are both pushing, ostensibly your shoulders are pushing, your triceps are pushing, your back is stabilizing. Ostensibly, those things are true. But because you have more muscle over on the right side and humans are right side dominant, the activation pattern will never be truly equal. So if you're doing two arms at the same time, the right side of your body is going to predictably take over regardless of whether you're right side, righty or lefty. If you accepted that to be the truth, would bilateral training be what you would start with? If you knew that bilateral training is going to overly, inf overly use the right side, is it truly bilateral? It doesn't seem that way to me. If we had a greater understanding of asymmetry, that the right side and the left side are not the same, and the moment you try to impose symmetry upon an asymmetrical system, you're going to have, at least the asymmetrical human system, the right side will initiate more and, and bear more of the burden than the left, simply because it's the dominant side. If that's the case, wouldn't it make sense to make sure that you have single limb or single sided competency? So that you are really good at using your left side and by itself, and you're really good at using the right side by itself. Not that they're ever used by themselves, but wouldn't you want to make sure that your left side and your right side have sim similar competencies and similar strength before you go into bilateral training? I know I would, but we don't learn it like that. We bilaterally lift. And we bilaterally lift. That's how it's done. And then, you know, single limb training is usually an afterthought. 
so from my perspective, normal is actually what PRI is talking about. You better have competency of your left side, let's just say your left hip musculature, and competency of the right side, right hip musculature, before you try to combine the two into a, into a bilateral lift that will never truly be bilateral. Otherwise, you're going to go into extension and you're going to use substitute muscles instead of the muscles that you're trying to use. Uh, that is just going to happen. Um, because the human body does not move two arms and two legs at the same time. It's crossed. One arm and one leg. All right, so right arm functionally works with the left leg and the left arm functionally works with the right leg. That's what moves us forward as humans, natural human movement. One side of the body moves forward while the other side moves back. When you're doing two arms or two legs at the same time, again, I'm not against it, but I just want you to think about it a little bit differently because of the things that I see. Uh, when you have two arms or two legs moving at one time, you're forcing the body, watch my chest, both sides come forward at the same time to try to get that weight over my head. That is not really natural human movement. That is a gym exercise, but it's not human movement because you don't have one side moving opposite the other side. You have to have pairs of opposites. That's what yin and yang is, pairs of opposites. It's all over Eastern philosophy, Buddhism, Hinduism, all that. Pairs of Adam and Eve, whatever you want to talk about. Pairs of opposites, right and left. A, a bilateral lift is not an opposite. It's not. It's just, it's, it's the same. And that's what we lift ourselves often into, into this PEC pattern. You become one body. You no longer have the ability to use a right and a left. You become one. And when you become one, you know, you don't actually have your right. You don't have your left. I mean, they're there, but they're purely compensatory. Now, I'm not saying don't bilaterally lift. If you want to, go ahead. But what you should be doing, in my humble opinion, is displaying single limb competency and strength without using compensation. Now, how, you're gonna, how do you test that? Well, there's something called the at the Haruska adduction lift test. It's a PRI test. It's exactly that. It's showing you whether you have mastery and neuromuscular control, the left side and the right side for both adduction and abduction. So it's already built into PRI. However, um, so I would want people to display decent scores on that lift test uh, so that they can optimally split up the sides of the body go into bilateral training if they want to without becoming one body again because they're going into extension and they're tight and now they can't rotate properly. Their arms and their legs are no longer really working together during normal human movement, such as walking and running. Um, and they become, people will often become disconnected from their body. They their arms and their legs, because the torso stops rotating, the spine, the thorax stops rotating appropriately, every, the appendages, the arms, the legs, the neck, everything becomes fragmented and disconnected. There's no neurological connection anymore. You see it all the time. I see people trying to, this is what I've been seeing lately, uh, when people try to swing their arms in this very simple position, they can't do it. There's no down up motion. It's not down up. They're thrusting their arms forward and there's no rotation through this torso, then how are they moving forward? They're extending their back and putting their neck forward and pulling with their hip flexors. They are completely compensatory. And that's what we see. And too much bilateral lifting without the ability to uh, separate the left side and the right side. Again, I'm not against bilateral lifting. It just has to be put in, it just has to be part of the overall program, not the entire program. So I would just like to also point out the C-squirt. So a C, that's gonna be like C-squirt, what does that have to do with anything? So a C-squirt is a marine animal and it's born and for one or two days, it, uh, it swims and then it finds a place to sit for the rest of its life. It just sits on a rock or whatever it's gonna sit on. It sits and then from then on, because it doesn't have to move any, it's not gonna move again. It's born, it swims, it sits, it places itself on a rock, 
And then because it's never going to move again, it devours its central nervous system, eats it, doesn't eat it anymore. Central nerve. So if you look at this book, Eye of the Vortex, I mentioned it before. Let me write, see, let me just uh, go over what he writes. Um, first, the human mind, in my view, from its very evolutionary inception, mindness, which he's basically the processes of the mind, is the internalization of movement. Central nervous systems are only required to exist for organisms that move. So the sea squirt, when it needs to move, when it needs to swim and find a place to sit, it has a central nervous system because it's moving. And then it sits, no longer needs the central nervous system because it's not, not, not going to move again, and it eats it. When you stop moving because of your lifestyle, the way you train, too much tension in your life, it's like you're devouring your own nervous system. And now everything becomes fragmented. So it's like, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of, I was a sea squirt. I can assure you of that because I was one of these people who had just, my limbs were not connected. They were not rhythmically moving with the rest of my body because the rest of the body wasn't moving. I was extended. My head was forward. I'll attach this picture. This is a picture of me. Look at that. Look at that forward head. I must have been 13 or 14 in that picture. Look how forward my head was. That was a body that was extended, head forward, looking down at the ground because I couldn't sense the ground. That was a sensory issue. That was, I was a sea squirt, guaranteed. Uh, I was still athletic enough to play sports. I could lift, I could do all these things, but eventually, not too long after that picture was probably taken, my body started to break down pretty quickly. Um, so, and the other thing is, the, so the mind, in this person's opinion, which, and he's a pretty famous scientist, the mind was used as an internalization, is the internalization of human movement. A central nervous system is necessary for, to coordinate movement. Once you don't need to move anymore, the central nervous system isn't really necessary, so you're not going to eat your own nervous system, but it becomes, you know, it's no longer working properly. So you have to be careful with your training. I think it should be completely rethought, the whole idea of training. The further you go away from natural human movement in your training, which would be one side doing one thing, the other side doing the other, the further you go from there, I think your nervous system starts to get, in a way, devoured. It's going to change. And then complement that with too much sitting, too much sitting, too much bilateral lifting takes away your ability to move as a normal human should, normal human movement, and I think your nervous system then fragments and you have limbs that don't cooperate and you can't move anymore without using your neck and your back. I see it. So what would I do? What, this would be my advice to people just starting off. Not that anyone cares, but this would be my advice. Make sure that someone has single limb competency through their hips, that they have strength through their left hip and their right hip, that they can stay neutral. And this is where PRI is so valuable because I don't know, there is nothing else that ensures neutrality and this type of strength that we're talking about. Most of our strength comes through extension, but that's not really strength. Well, it's a type of strength, but it's a strength that breaks you down over time because you can't rotate anymore, you're too tight. So PRI should be integrated into strength training programs to ensure that people can leave the gym neutral and stable. That's number one. And that is kind of the point of a lot of the courses for the tools are there. You just have to take the courses and understand them. So that's number one. And then number two, if people insist on lifting a lot, what they should do, what I believe people should do is make sure you're playing a sport that does a lot of direction change, such as soccer, basketball, and boxing. Maybe not boxing in terms of sparring with people and getting hit in the head and pummeled, but boxing, I believe, is a great activity for maintaining proper rotation and frontal plane movement. I have a friend, he's a big kind of meathead, really strong, really, really strong. And I remember testing him, and he was a plain old left AIC, right BC pattern. 
full neck range of motion, and this guy is muscular and big and deadlifts and squats and does all that stuff. But what did he grow up doing because his father was a trainer? He boxed. And he surmised, like, do you think boxing is what allowed me to keep all this frontal plane movement? I was like, it's a distinct possibility. So I think if you want to lift heavy and you want to continue to train mostly bilateral, well, I don't think that's a good idea. But if that's part of your life because you're a power lifter or just the demands of your sport or the way the training program is set up or because you like to, fine. But just make sure that you are doing bilateral lifting. I'm sorry. You are doing unilateral exercises. I would highly recommend that you find someone that understands PRI so you learn how to get yourself neutral and reestablish true hip strength, non-compensatory hip strength, which is uh, as shown through uh, the PRI strength tests. And I would main make sure that you continue to play, play sports that make you change direction a lot. Basketball, soccer, boxing, badminton, I don't know, things like that. So that would be my advice for people. And if you want to also another great uh, uh, TED Talk, you can find it on YouTube from Daniel Wolpert, uh, Brains Are For Movement. You can watch that, and he's saying the same thing. Uh, brains are for, it gets a little more complicated than that, but brains are for movement. So I'm going to put that link in, uh, and at the, I'm going to put the link in the description. But the point is, again, the further you move away from true human movement, because you sit too much, you stare at a computer too much, and you do too much exercise that is bilateral in nature, that forces the right side and the left side to do the same thing at the same time rather than alternate, uh, your nervous system will suffer the repercussions. And I see this a lot. Uh, and, you know, people who look like they're in good shape and they are in so much pain and their body's so dysfunctional because they're, in a way, it's metaphorical, but they've kind of devoured their own nervous system and they're kind of turning into sea squirts.